the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, we ask your blessings on uh, all the individuals involved in this meeting today, particularly on Dr. Jim and not only his wife and family, but also all the students and businesses that he, and politicians take that he with. comes in contact with. We ask you in a special way to look after Bologna. Uh, we are asking you specific prayers for those that are ill. Uh, Lauren, who normally is our uh, question and answer host, uh, her mother passed away uh, on Sunday. So keep uh, her and her mother in your prayers. Okay. And for all those that are ill, we specially pray. Uh, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, Mother, of God, Mother, Mother of God, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and in the hour of our, our death. death. Amen. 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 Our Lady of Chestova, pray, pray for us. Pray for us. St. John Paul II, pray, pray, pray for, for us. us. All Lord. Polish saints, pray, pray, pray for, for us. us. In the, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. One on behalf of the board and the staff, I'd like to welcome all of you to this virtual meeting. I can't think of a better presenter uh, that represents Polonia as Dr. Jim Masterkiewicz. Uh My only surprise would be that there's anybody on this that hasn't either one met him uh, or has been recruited by him <laughs> or talked to by him, but I tell you, what really impressed me with him, uh, we just had the Polish American Council of Texas annual meeting be, yeah. and the amount of people and the number of people that came together and the students from both the uh, A&M and the UT club. And I think the impact he's making with the youth uh, from our standpoint, I know that Alice uh, yeah. or our new executive director was able to uh, We've had several uh, school districts coming through and the kids are going through scavenger hunts in the center and uh, in order to get the, the information. And it's really been uh, uh, interesting to watch people of every ethnicity going through and learning about Polish history and Polish history in Texas and uh, to be able to get facts off the exhibits themselves. But we're here not to listen to that. We're here to listen to Dr. Jim. Jim, I don't know how we got you on our schedule. I know every time I try to talk to you, you're either in Poland, coming from Poland, planning to go to Poland, or traveling around the nation. But uh, you're really doing a phenomenal job well, for you. Polonia. And uh, we thank you for being on the our board and uh, all the work you do. Thank you, Al. Thank you very much. I'm very, very proud to be on the board. I'm very proud of the Heritage Center and that beautiful, beautiful uh, tribute to our heritage and to Bishop Yonta. I'm here because of him. He recruited me. Like I told y'all, I told him no three times. <laughs> he didn't ever take no for an answer. <laughs> he never quit. Okay. And uh, bless his heart. And, and I'm here. And thanks to him. So we need to pay tribute to him some for that, too. So thank you for that. Angelica, I'm going to uh, mm -hmm. move into this, but I'm going to ask a question here. It says on here, this meeting is being recorded. And I, I don't know if I hit got it. Will you be able to record me if I'm still a full host? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, because we're, we're co-hosting, so you'll be fine. Okay, because I'm not sure, because when we co-hosted earlier on my when with Jennifer, it would not do it, but we'll, we'll, let's just, we'll go with it. Okay. Yeah, we'll try it because it'll say that um, recording stopped. So we'll know if it says that, then you could go ahead and start recording. Okay. So let's okay. go ahead and try it. Okay. okay Thank you. I had trouble with those videos, but we'll go ahead. Okay. I'm going to hit uh, at this time, uh, then click record. You got that. Okay. I'm going to go to shared screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to do share sound. Okay, and I'm going to hit screen two. And it's going to take a second. Mm -hmm. We could see it. Okay, I'm going to hit slideshow. 
from the beginning. Okay, do y'all see the first slide? We're good yes, there? Yes, we can. Good there? Okay. Yep. So I uh, took the slides from my lectures and changed it and put that in there real quick and went on. I uh, was still working on this as of this morning, actually, because there's been some um, un 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 some interrupted requests that I had no control over. So once again, thank you uh, for asking me to do this. It's an honor to be here to represent uh, our culture, our Polish heritage, our traditions and customs. Uh, it's a it's an even big honor to do this for the Polish Heritage Center. So thank you all for having me. And uh, if you will uh, bear with me, I'm going to give you a little bit of a little bit about Jim Mazurkiewicz. Okay, before Jim was a doctor, before all of this other, when he was just a little kid running around barefooted <laughs> and uh, just happy as a lark. But I'm going to go into that if you'll bear with me because that has something to do with who I am why I am uh, so passionate about my culture, my heritage, and I'm gonna give you the people in my lives that made me who I am today. And uh, so if you'll bear with me, I'm gonna go into that a little bit because I think it, it it's a direct reflection of, of who I am because we uh, the people that impacted us live in each of us today. I, this is the quote that uh, Angelica put out in the advertisement. I changed it a little bit because my grammar in the original one was not really correct. And I reread it and I says, well, that was done in 2013. And I hadn't gone back and looked at it. But our Polish music, as you all know, and I've said this, is a thread. It's a, it's a language that crosses uh, over many cultures without speaking. Um, it, but it binds our Polish com American community together today. And, but we've almost uh, lost our ability, and I'm talking about our 19th century immigration of our ability to speak. But our customs are tied to agriculture, the farm, our faith. And, uh, you know, our dialects, we still have the Silesian dialect down in South Texas because I've recorded them. We have some of it's Wielka Polska still from the Brazos Valley. But our music is what is been able to keep us alive and keep us make that makes us Polish. It's like when you go to Worst Fest, you'll hear German music. When you go to the Czech Fest, you'll hear Czech music. Our Polish music is also unique and extremely beautiful. It creates an atmosphere at any event and brings back memories of your past and growing up while creating new memories in the present to preserve our language and our culture and tradition. And I've said this before, if a picture is worth a thousand words, music is worth a thousand memories. You can see in some of these pictures here in the upper left, that's me and my friends. Uh, I had brought a, a friend that I met in 1977 when I graduated from A&M up in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And I went to his wedding and my wedding, and that's his son on the left. That's the three of us. My son, James, is in the back. And James, we've got Brian Marshall uh, Janczyk, and we've got Wisnowski in that picture. You see me and my son in the upper right. Me and my great uncle, who was an inspiration in the bottom right corner, and I'll talk about him a little later. And then in the bottom left, Tech Black Klebenica that has played a couple of times at the Heritage Center and all over Texas, and y'all have met them before too. Let me give you a little bit about my personal history. Uh, I don't want to bore you, but I think it's important maybe just to bring this out because there's some other information in here as well that will come out. I was born in Houston, Texas on September the 17th. That was the day uh, in 1939 uh, uh, that uh, Russia invaded Poland, actually. But that was about, you know, 10 so years earlier. But anyway, I was born in Heights Hospital in the Heights region of Houston. That's, it was about 2.5 miles from the Polish home that no longer stands there on Studywood and White Oak. And then the Polish home was only about two miles from the house that we lived in on Robbie Street in Houston. Now, the Heights area was the center of the Polish community after World War II in Houston, and many of the people left the farms in the Brazos Valley and other places and uh, to, seek, to seek employment. And then they would come home and, and share their wealth and, uh, with, their, with their parents and help on weekends on the farms, and I know that was happening all over Texas. I am 100% of Polish ancestry, and they came from the villages of Inglebo, Swabno, which is uh, between Poznan and Gniezno. And Wrocław is about 30 miles east of Gniezno, and then Helmno Razen is north of Toron. All of that was considered Prussia, and that entire region was Wielka Polska. 
And today, it's still Vielka Polska for the first two, but the second two are in the province called Kuyavi Pomorsky. And uh, <clears throat> that is, uh, uh, now there's 16 different provinces, or you would call them states. We call them voivodstvas in Poland. I had a family that was large on both sides with many, many cousins. And the beauty of it is, my parents and my grandparents and great-grandparents, most of them were the oldest of each generation. So when I talk about knowing five of my great-grandparents, and I knew them up to my 20s, not counting my grandparents, I'm talking about my great-grandparents, and uh, and those folks that didn't know any English, you'll understand. And I was one, blessed to be one of the older cousins that had the opportunity to know them and be impacted by them. And with my cousins, uh, I mean, I actually have 36 first cousins on mama's side and on daddy's side, just the Yuzviak, there's there's probably 140. And uh, but all together, I had a couple of hundred different cousins. But we always were together growing up at weddings, church festivals, events at the Polish home or back in Chapel Hill. Uh, the weddings we were going to at least once a month there and especially through the 50s and 60s. I mean, we were going to a wedding almost all the time, either in Houston or Chapel Hill. And I heard that music, and I can still hear that music to this day as a little kid, because they wouldn't go home at 10 o'clock like you would today or at 8 o'clock after the meal. They made a blanket up under the tables, and that's where we slept till 1, 2, 3 in the morning whenever they were ready to go home. And so I slept to this music, and so it's it's embedded in my brain to this day. My parents, both of them, mom and dad, mom's still living. We lost dad last year. First language was Polish. They didn't learn English till the first grade. My grandparents on my dad's side never did learn to speak English, and I was up into my 40s when they passed. Uh, but my mom's side did learn a little English because they lived in Houston and moved to Houston later and uh, had to learn a little bit. Mom is one of 10 kids. Uh, my dad is one of three, but his mama was one of 14 and his dad's one of seven. And so when you start multiplying all that out, we were very close and together all the time. My great grandparents, uh, I knew five of those eight. Uh, and uh, I was, like I said, uh, in my early 20s when the last ones passed. And my great great grandparents, I didn't know, but 11 of the 16 did come and they're all buried here in Chapel Hill. But none of them ever learned to speak English. But however, the great greats did speak German because they were required to as they immigrated from Prussia and they have to speak German. And uh, but we spoke a dialect called Vielka Polska. It's still recognized to this day. Uh, my paternal grandfather, which was my dad's dad, played a Honer German accordion. I still have that accordion. You'll see it in my garage. It doesn't play anymore. But the Germans invented the accordion in 1820 in Berlin. Both my grandmothers, uh, on both, uh, both of them, could play a few tunes also on the one-button accordion as well. But you got to understand, the part of Poland that we were from, from Prussia, was under German rule. Ger uh, Berlin is not very far from Poznan. Actually, Poznan is halfway between Berlin and Warsaw. And so it was easy for that to be introduced, and we accepted it into our Polish instrument, into our capellas or our bands and then brought those with us when we came in the 19th century. Uh, my grandmother, my dad's mother, her uh, one of her youngest brothers, uh, she was one of 14. He was number 14. Grandma uh, Mazurkowicz was a Józwiak. She was number three. He played in the Polish Eagle Bands, one of the more popular, very famous bands that played all over Houston, all over Texas, the Brazos Valley. I know they have played, and they played down in South Texas for uh, my uh, Pana Maria friends, they played all over the state. And I grew up listening to this band and uh, several others from Washington County and Robertson County in Houston. And in this area, I can remember the 60s, there was at least six to eight different Polish bands. Today, there's just three of us. And uh, Daniel Sandowski, Brian Marshall, and the band that I have that we play from time to time. I, to give you a little history about my musical background, I started playing a clarinet in the fifth grade. And I played up through the 12th grade, and uh, and I started about the age of 10, and I ended up winning send six first place medals uh, through high school and UIL in state competition. And so I can still play the clarinet today. I can read the music. I just can't play it by ear, but I focus on the accordion or the concertina because, and sometimes I'll get the clarinet out and play just for fun. 
When I graduated from A&M in 1973, which is 50 years ago this past this year, I moved to Chicago, became a USDA meat grader, and there I was immersed into the Polish community of Polonia Grove, which was the big Polish community of the 19th century folks that gathered every Sunday afternoon. And I was inspired by that music and culture and this instrument called the concertina. Now you're gonna see me play this in a minute, but this was an instrument that was developed in Chicago. And it's an American instrument, and they call it a bandonia in France. I don't know who came first, but but anyway, I was intrigued by it. I thought it was Polish, but I'm not so sure that the Czechs didn't get it first. But anyway, the Polish upgraded it. But anyway, uh, if I'd have known that, I'd have took up the fiddle, which is what I really should have played as what I really wanted to play anyway. There, was, <clears throat> there I was immersed in that community. And then later I got transferred to Green Bay, which was three, four hours north of Chicago, because I was single and a lot of the married graders didn't want to be out on the road all the time. So I took that because that way I got per diem, food, lodging for free. And I it was another Polish community as well. And then I got I introduced there at the stop in in Pulaski or Pulaski. Uh, every Sunday afternoon, they had a live radio program and they would feature a new band every week. And the one weekend I was in there, there were three 12 year old kids playing these concertinas and I just loved it. And I said, if they can do it, I'm going to do it. So I took six one-hour lessons, six weeks before I moved back to Texas to marry my sweetheart, Kathy. We've been married, going to be 46 years in April. So I took six one-hour lessons on Tuesday night in secret uh, so that I could play at my wedding and surprise my family. And I did do that. And I sang in Polish, played in Polish, and then my buddy that you saw in the first slide came down and several of the graders and all those guys flew down for the wedding as well. It was a three-day wedding. We had all the bells and whistles, and uh, it was an old-fashioned wedding where we butchered our own calf and hogs, and we used our own meat. All the women brought the potato salad and all the fixing, all the desserts. We did not have a caterer. We had 16 kegs of Long Star beer from San Antonio, and uh, it was, like I said, a three-day event, and it was just like the way it was when I was growing up. We did it ourselves. Today, I still play at Polish festivals. I play at weddings because I've come to St. Hedwig Group and played for a wedding. I played the father-daughter dance just uh, a couple of years ago down there out of Seguin. I've been playing for Polish funerals and I've learned those songs and I can sing all of those original songs that you play at gravesite. And I do a complete gravesite ceremony in Polish and play those songs and and uh, and sing them. I played for baptisms, uh, kolendi which is coming up December 30th in Chapel Hill. We'll have about 150 people. We've got a full schedule out lined up for that day. We play for Dojenki at Houston. We play in Chapel Hill. And then for Vigilia, which is the Christmas Eve dinner for a private deal for my mom and my, my when my dad was alive, we'll do it again for my mom at her house. Someday when mom passes, that will pass to us. And I can remember since my great-grandparents doing Vigilia there, then grandma, then my parents, and then our, our house one day. These are my grandparents on my dad's side, uh, Francis on the left and Steve on the right. And uh, I wrote this several years ago about them. They were both uh, could not speak English. They could not write in English. I was a translator from the time I was six going to the USDA FCS office, uh, setting up the cotton allotment. I was what you say, Tumacic. I was the interpreter and making sure that grandfather got the right amount of allotment for the amount of cotton that he could plant and that type of thing. And I'm here six, seven years old, you know, uh, you know, interpreting for them. And then I'd have to go with grandma from time to time and go Christmas shopping for the daughter-in-laws. And I didn't like that at all going in the lingerie department uh, when I was a kid. It was a little embarrassing for a little boy to go in there and look at stuff like that. But anyway, my uh, I talked about my grandmother and my grandfather uh, they were uh, the first generation to be born in Texas, but you got to understand their grandparents came with my great grandparents, which would be my great greats came. The greats were like one and two years old. So then my grandparents and parents and so forth. So there are five generations of Texans here, and they're all buried in one cemetery at St. Stanislaus there in Chapel Hill. At that one time, that was the largest Polish parish in the entire Brazos Valley. Uh, those are the regions I talked about where they came from, but I'll say this, some of the things I learned from them, even though they were not, uh, 
what I would say educated. I mean, they had like second and third grade uh, education, but they were honest, hardworking, respectful, humble, forgiving, thoughtful, obedient, and most of all, loving. My grandfather was an agriculturalist, conservationist, economist, loving husband, and a musician. And I learned those things from him. And that inspired me to go into ag, provide for my family, be conservative, frugal, and learn to play an instrument. My grandmother was a teacher. She would sit down that porch back that you see in that picture back there, and we would read a first grade book together. And she would teach me in Polish, just like y'all have in the Polish museum, those first grade uh, readings, those exact same ones that I would read with her. And so she was trying to teach me and to be proud of my Polish. And when we would go to the store, she was not embarrassed. She could not speak English, but she would have me interpret and she would just go right on as if, you know, she never looked back is what I'm trying to say. So she taught me to be proud of who I was, taught me to be a good Catholic and be proud of my Polish heritage. Uh, I am able to speak Polish today because of those two people. I spent all of my summers with them from the time I was born to the time I probably went to high school and then I got more active and then I started working summer jobs since I was like 14, 15. Yeah, to pay, buy my clothes, and then put myself through college. But anyway, uh, I have uh, been personally blessed with many riches and beautiful treasures. And life is this way. You know, it's not all about monetary things or money that's rich, that's also treasures. The traditions, the music, the language, the things that I inherited for them are some of the greatest treasures I treasure in my life today. And that's why it has affected me personally and professionally and this is why you know Jim Mazarkevich that you know today. This is my mom and dad just a couple of years ago, not many. And that's the old house, the same house that you just saw. It's still standing. My uh, sister lives there and there's a new house in front of it that my parents live in. And I, if you let me for a minute, the light went off. I've got to walk. For some reason, this light saver. I'm going to I'm going to read a few stories to you before I get into some of these other things, if you'll bear with me, that as a child growing up, I told you, I still remember the three day weddings and Kathy and I had one as well with the same band that played at their my parents wedding. These two people highly influenced me. Both of them, mom and dad's first language was Polish. Mom moved to Houston and was not as fluent, but she's still fluent to this day as my dad. My dad was has been has met governors of Poland. He's met people of state. He's met professors and different things. And they said his Polish was impeccable, but it was 19th century dialect, but it was perfect for that dialect. He met the linguistic, a person from Adam Mikiewicz University. We taped them and myself. I also taped the South Texas folks. You can see it on the PACT website. They said that it was perfect Wielka Polska dialect. And they were, they thought that was a treasure or gold nugget that they received that they have it now in the archives in the university in Poznan. And, and let me just say this, the Polish wedding is one of the most important and revered of all Polish customs. And it was a great sense of pride for a father to put out, and I'm gonna say it like in English, like you would say it in Polish, to put out a good wedding. And the word vesele, you've heard the word vesele. Vesele is the reception. Shlub is the church wedding. But vesela is the reception. And what does that word mean? The root of that word is veselice, which means to rejoice. That's what the reception means, to rejoice. Because we're bringing the union of two people and starting a new beginning. And it is indeed appropriate for occasion that's traditionally associated with joy and celebration. Let me say this. The lady in the pink there taught me how to dance when I was five years old. I taught my wife how to dance when I asked her to dance for the first time I met her. She turned me down and I told my wife, well, I'll teach you. It was, she wasn't my wife at the time, but anyway, uh, but my wife, mother taught me to do the obedic. And because of the Vielka Polska and the region we're from, we do the polka and all this as well, but the obedic is the treasured and the foot stomper that you know today. When they build those wooden dance floors, those platforms, and those men would stomp on those boards to see how much dirt could come up between the cracks of those boards, you know, and then they were adding rhythm to the music at the same time. And uh, I like to do that once in a while, too. We still have a dance floor over at Anderson when they do their church festival, and we have a little fun with that. But the melodies, the obedic is a distinctive rhythm with a heavy third beat 
And the oberic, what does that mean, really mean? It means obratetche. What does that mean? It means to spin. It means to turn. So if you watch me dance an obetic, I'm going to dance it exactly the way it was intended to. We will spin and we will spin all the way around the edge of the dance floor. <clears throat> and Kathy and I have won several dance contests uh, around the country with the obetic. And, uh, and we love to dance to this day. I said my grandfather uh, and both grandmas played a one-button accordion. But my grandfather, Steve, the one that was in the previous picture, actually paid, played for all the weddings in the day. His brother, Anthony Antek, had two sons that were priests, Father Ben. Well, they were Monsignor Ben and Monsignor Harry in uh, LaGrange with the Czech families there in that county. And his daughter is still living today, 94, 95 years old, in San Antonio, uh, and, and Sister Florentine. And her daddy was the fiddle player. My grandfather was the accordion player, and they played for the weddings. And uh, I can still remember my grandfather playing. I would play the washboard with him to keep rhythm. And I wish I've got one picture of us, and I couldn't find it to put in here, and I really hate that I couldn't do that. But <clears throat> that inspired me so much. And then when I was also in Chicago and Green Bay inspired me as well to take those lessons. And I told you, I took six one-hour lessons uh, from Art Welgus up north. Well, in 2008, I, uh, my, my dad's older brother had a birthday party. That's a few years back. He's deceased now. But my uncle Zygmunt, my grandmother in the previous slides, youngest brother who played with the Polish Eagles, was sitting there. We were playing together, two accordion players. And I was, you know, I had, was inspired by him my whole life watching him play the accordion. So that's why I play and my grandfather played the accordion. But what was shocking to me, I never knew this until he told me that day, and he's deceased now too. He sat at the knee of my grandfather, and that inspired him to play the accordion. And then years later, I was inspired by my great uncle, my grandmother's baby brother. Actually, she could have been his son because she was old enough to be his son, and she treated him that way too. She would tell him what to do and what he did wrong. He was the same age as my dad, just a couple years older. But anyway, that was a beautiful story that I had not known. But let me say this, all of these celebrations are tied to the, to the farm, to the church, to our Christian values, providing an upbeat, lively atmosphere. And you know what I've always said, life is a wonderful gift, and it's meant to be cherished and celebrated. And the Poles do that. The Hispanics do that. The Czechs do that. We all need to be proud, and Germans, of our ethnic background, and celebrate that because that's what makes us unique. I've told the Poles in Poland many times, if you forget and quit playing the folk music, what makes you different? You're all playing all this rock music from America, which is fine, and this disco polo and all that stuff. What makes you Polish? I said, the, the Obedic, the Mazurik, the Polonaise. Those are ours, the Krakowia. Those are our dances. Those are our mo melodies, our rhythms. And we need to continue to share that because that's what makes us Polish. Because when the Czechs play their music, we know it's Czech or German or et cetera. And, uh, and so they said they never thought about it that way. And so I've tried to inspire some of that across the water as well as here at home. Well, as you see, I play po po Polish folk music to honor my ancestors. They came before me to this great country and I play so another generation can hear it, learn it, and preserve it. You know, I heard all this growing up as a child, and the music we play is one of the treasures, as I said, that we've inherited from our ancestors. The music we play today is as pure here in Texas as it was in the 19th century. We were never disrupted or interrupted or diluted by two world wars, communism, the partitioning time, and, the re and so we have now been reintroducing this music back to Poland. I can tell you that I'll play a couple of them for you that I have reintroduced back to Poland because I've introduced lots of musicians here. I'm not as good as them, but they can play it better than I can, but they get the drift, okay? The melodies. I'm not trying to say I'm an expert by no means. But anyway, I wanted to share a little bit of those stories with you about my childhood and uh, because it makes me who I am. I know all of you have beautiful stories as well. And uh, But I just wanted you to get to know a little bit about a Jim Mazarkevich. 
these are these is the Mazurkevich family. This is my great grandfather here with the mustache on the right. My grandfather is in the middle, and my grandmother here on the left. I'm going to show you their mothers in a minute, born 200 years ago. I have pictures of them as well. And the little boy in the middle, I look just like that in the six, first grade at six years old. And I wanted to find that picture, but I, I had so many irons in the fire, I couldn't do that. But just trust me, we could be twins, okay? The little boy here on the far right is Monsignor Harry and Monsignor Ben Mazurkiewicz's dad and Sister Florentine Mazurkiewicz that's in San Antonio today that's 94, 95, and they say she's still sharp as a tack, and she's still running her own show, okay? <laughs> so anyway, all of these are the children, and, they're, and I put their married names behind them. They were, only one was married as the one here at the girl in the middle at that time, and uh, so anyway, I just wanted to put that in there. You can see they had a little money. They weren't quite uh, very poor. That was done in about 1910 in Brenham, Texas, in the studio. Now, this is my grandma, Mazurkiewicz, Yozviak's family. This is her right here, the girl on the far right, married the little boy in this other picture here in the middle, okay? And you saw their picture on their 25th wedding anniversary earlier. This is my great-grandfather, Yozviak, and great-grandmother, Stella, or Stanislava Yozviak. This is Henry's younger brother. These are my great-grandparents. They were two and one year old when they came with my great, great grandparents to Texas. And then, so these were the children here born here in Chapel Hill. And uh, I knew all of these kids. Rosen, Rosanna, right here, this first girl on the far left, lived to be 99. And when I came back from the, my first trip to Poland, she wanted to hear all about it. And I had to tell her in Polish because she does not did not speak one word of English. She was so happy to hear my stories when I came back the first time. Uh, Rosanna, she was a Zintek, and uh, she was a Yuzviak from home, but married a Zintek. Several of these Yuzviaks right here married Zinteks, just like John Zintek that's on here today. I think there were four, all the girls married Zinteks except my grandmother. And then several, this boy married a Zintek, and a couple of others did too. No one married kinfolk, but it was brothers, sisters that married. So, but anyway, I'm going to go on, and these are the same kids back here in the background. These are my great-grandparents, Yuzviaks, on their 50th anniversary. That was 1952. I wasn't born yet. They had 14 children. Three of them, two children died as young babies, and one died as an adult from a horse and wagon accident. This is my grandmother right here. She's the reason that I'm as Polish as I am and uh, that I can speak it to this day. This is her grandfather, the one that started Chapel Hill Church, St. Stanislaw, Peter Yozviak. He came, he's my great, great grandfather. And I've got pictures of his wife, but I didn't have time to get all those in here. But anyway, he was born in 1854 uh, from Suavno, and actually from the same village as Kubiak, the famous coach from uh, the, uh, uh, the Broncos. Uh, and uh, but anyway, he's also from this same village. He's from Houston. But anyway, it was six men that was at, and they went to the bishop and they had to vote a council in. He was a leader in the community. His name is on the bell in the church to this day. Uh, that uh, the first church was established though in Brenham in 1870. There were so many Polish families that they had to start a second one in Chapel Hill, and that's why we have two in that county to this day. This is my great-grandparents again. I, this is how I remember they looked when I was 20 when they passed away. This picture was in 66. They passed away in 68, I believe, in 70 or 71. And, uh, and actually, uh, I'm going to tell a story on her. When I was in Poland in Gniezno in the Archdiocese, I looked up everything about them and their uh, everything about them. And she was actually born out of wedlock. And when they moved, they didn't tell anybody, and they had 13 more kids. They stayed married. And I told my dad that story when I got back, and he got very upset with me because that was his favorite grandma that I was talking about. I says, well, it's written right there, and the priest put it in there. And I think that's why we invented confession, so we'd get, you know, all the truth on everything, you know. They did marry in Poznan, came to, the, to Texas. The rest is history, and they had a lot of kids. Anyway... These are my great great grandmothers. The one on the right came to came to the U.S. I, we think she died in Detroit. I'm trying to find her grave. She was a Kosciuszko, 
We are almost positive she's the great niece of Tadeusz Kosciuszko, the architect of, of West Point, the one that won the Battle of Saratoga. His statues across the street from the White House. There's only five statues there. This is my great, great grandmother. The one on the left is Barbara Borowiak Płakluska. She was born on the lake shore of Mieszko Pierwszy, the, the first ruler of Poland, the Glacier Lake. There's an island there. Ledna Gora is that village that's right there. And there is a museum now. They just discovered these ruins about 20 years ago. I encourage you to go there. They found the first palace, the first church on this glacier island. It was a perfect place to put a castle where they were protected by water on all sides and a very, very deep glacier lake. These are my two great, great grandmothers. These pictures are in my house. Well, too far. On the left uh, is, the, is my great, great uh, grandmother. I remember her uh, funeral, uh, not great, excuse me, great grandmother. Uh, the last one where the rosary and the entire funeral was held in the home in this house back here. I was about three years old and it was all in Polish. And I remember that going to the graveside, singing the same songs I sing now in Polish at graveside. This, this house is still standing. This is my uh, great grandfather. This is her husband right here with the fight uh, with the fight guy, with the pipe. And the one on the right is my great grandfather Malinowski and his father came, which was my great great grandfather Malinowski, one of the more wealthy people in Chapel Hill, one of the big landowners, and that family still has some of that land. And this is my grand great grandmother. I knew her very well as well. Uh, she didn't die till in the early seventies, and she was a Durkowski. And her dad has the oldest store in Chapel Hill, and we're actually going to stop there for Christmas caroling this year and honor that store. There's a plaque on there from the Durkowski family. She was a pistol. She liked to play cards, but she had signals, and she didn't like losing. So she had little signals, <laughs> except she had her partner, so you would know what she had, and uh, she was a pistol. Anyway, this is the wedding of my, uh, the far right is my mother's dad's wedding day, and uh, this is him. His dad is right here with the pipe I just showed you earlier. This is his father-in-law right here. These are his brothers back here in the back and family on the wedding day in 1927. And then it was all Polish music, everything, uh, everything in Polish that day. I wanted to show you this picture. This is the last wedding I remember where the reception, the Vesela, was held at the house. They were all held at the home. And this is about 1959, the last one I remember. And then it got to be, you know, too redneck to have them at the house. We started having them at the halls. And we started building parish halls or expanding them or at the school hall or something like that, where Polish music was played. That little boy in that right-hand picture is a very young Jim Mazurkiewicz. And I'm holding a piece of juicy fruit gum. Because that isn't my grandma sitting there, but she's sitting one over that's not in the picture. And uh, and so I went over to her to get a little piece of gum. I'm about four years old at that time. And I remember this wedding like it was yesterday. It was in the oldest wooden church, Polish church, the oldest one still standing original from 1876 in Hempstead, Texas. It's an adoration chapel today uh, in, that, in Hempstead. And that's what the priest told me. It's the, it is the last standing original because either they burned down or built new ones, made schools out of them. But this one is still standing, was built in 1876. But this is at the farm of the Yainchak family where they built a platform and they danced and added. I remember that like it was yesterday. I remember the wedding ceremony, the schlub in that little wooden church is as if it was yesterday. This is a wedding and you'll see the instruments in here from Chapel Hill, Texas in 1911. Antonio Szymański and Władysław Stempochowski. And uh, November the 13th, 1911, this big thing, and it's not a tuba in the middle, that's a megaphone. That was the PA system, okay? You'll see the contrabass right here, the big bass right here. You'll see the fiddle right here. There's a clarinet in here, right here. And there is an accordion in here somewhere, and I can't see it right now, but there is an accordion in here as well. But what I want to show you that I know this is Wielka Polska wedding because this man right here on the far left is the master of ceremonies and he's holding a leather whip. I have one in my home that you'll see me carry as well. When you're the head of the party, the head of the reception, you're the, you're in charge and taking care of the making sure all the traditions are on time. You're singing the right songs. You're singing the right uh, 
uh, what we call Pshemava, you know, the passage, the, you know, all the things like that moving from one generation to another in a wedding. And so that is the Druzba. I know it also means the best man, but it also means here the one in charge of that wedding. And you can see the whip in that picture. This is a band from, and I'm going to talk about this gentleman in a minute, on the fiddle here, Joe Bartula Jr., right here. And this is the contrabass, a guitar. This is, I'm not sure whose wedding this is, but I just wanted to show you this was from Bremont, Texas. I didn't want to leave them out. And this man's grandson is in one of the fam most famous country bands there is today in Texas, and I'll show that to you in a minute. Let's talk about what makes a Polish band, the original Polish band? Trumpets are not Polish. The trombone, the tuba, those are German influences. Yes, you can go up north to hear a Polish band and you'll see trumpets and things like that. They're, the lead instrument is the violin or the ksipsa. The contrabass, the bass fiddle, is actually older than the violin. The, the accordion that you see there is an exact copy of the one of my grandfather in my garage. And that was introduced in 1820 and made its way over into the Polish uh, set of instruments. The bimbenic is the, uh, this right here is, is the percussion. It's deer skin over a rim and that's it. And then the clarinet. And so I was proud when I found this out during this research, I played two out of the four of these. And, uh, but I didn't play the lead instrument and it still bothers me to this day. It's the violin is, is my favorite. But what's interesting about the violin, it actually comes from Asia many years ago, and it first appeared in Italy in the 15th century, but it dates back to string instruments 4,500 years ago to Central Asia. And so the first string instrument, as it made its way east, we developed it, and you'll find out later down in here <clears throat> that, uh, let's just go down to the double bass. Actually, the double bass was more popular, actually, than the violin, 10 times more popular. Um, but it, it, and so the violin is actually the grandchild, the great-grandchild of this contrabass, as the uh, this Italian made the fiddle as you know it today, and then we adopted it as the lead instrument in Poland later on. The uh, go up one, the bimbenic, the the deerskin is the second one from the bottom. Uh, the clarinet uh, again, uh, it was invented in Germany in 1690. I didn't know that either. So the clarinet and the accordion comes from there. But of course, we were Prussians, so we're the Silesians. So we're the Czechs, you know, some of the Czech areas, but mostly Silesia and Wielka Polska were Prussia. So I just wanted to throw that out there to you about those instruments. Here's some of the, uh, some of the music that uh, were Polish that never were given credit uh, that made its way into the top country uh, dance hall classics. The Westphalia Waltz, Pitawa Szepani. I'm going to go into this in detail in a minute. But it was introduced by Cotton Collins and then popularized by Hank Thompson. And I'm going to give you the steps of how it happened. Hank Thompson took it up, and in 1955, he had a number one hit with it. And it's Pitawa Shepani or Siske Ripki. It's known by several different names. I can play it. I can sing it. If the young people today knew what the original words were of Pitawa Shepani, the, the lady's asking the doctor, uh, and if you knew what I'm was what the song was, they would be more interested in learning Polish because it's sexual in nature. Okay, and I'll just leave it at that. Number two, the Maiden's Prayer. Uh, this one here was uh, actually goes back, and it was written and published back in 1856, but it was taken and country made country. Okay, it's a lot slower when it was originally played, but they took it and changed a little bit and made Maiden's Prayer as you know it today. Put your little foot means in French, bar, uh, Varsoviana, uh, French for meaning from Warsaw, originated in Warsaw. But by 1850, the, the, uh, the monarchy, the aristocrats had adopted it as if it was the twist or line dancing of the 1990s or the twist of the 1960s. That was the hit deal in the 1850s. And that's why Maximilian I in 1864 brought it to Mexico City. And we'll talk about that in a minute. The, the Put Your Little Foot is a Mazurek, like my name, Mazurkevich. Kevich is just a suffix. The Mazur, Mazurek, is the front end of that, meaning this dance or the Missouri region, uh, either one. And then Cattle Call. How many of you have ever heard uh, the Cattle Call by Erity Arnold, all these country and western deals? 
Well, that was actually Pavel's walls. It was 1927. They took it in the 1940s and put all of that yodeling and all that and made it so beautiful as you know it today. I want to show you some musicians that we have pictures from 1915 and 1920. 1950 from New Waverly. And you can see here in this left one, it's a fiddle, a contrabass, a bottle of whiskey, a clarinet. And then he has the whip, which is a Vielka Polska. The same thing in the next picture. The first guy has the whip. We've got the clarinet, two trips us, two fiddles, and the contrabass, the bass. That is a Polish wedding zestful band. And, uh, and we're very, very lucky to have these pictures. And I've got the names of these people. And actually, Daniel Sendowski, this is his grandfather and father right here. And he's still living. He's 80-something years old, still can play, but not as active as he once was. This is a very young Jim Mazurkiewicz, and this was in 1987. I actually played every year since 1986 for the Polish Jays, the Polski Gene in Bremont. And the year before I actually played, I was the first street dance they ever had. My dad was not happy when we got there about four o'clock on that first year, the first day they had it. And there were some people singing, you know, gospel music and things like that. And there was nothing Polish going on. So he told me to go, go to the car and sit in front of the newspaper there on the sidewalk there. And I just started playing. And before you know it, there were six or seven musicians that showed up. Same of the same ones that you see here today. And a very young man that's on the fiddle there is Brian Marshall. Brian's 13 years younger than me. He's 17 in that picture. I'm 30. And we made a band that day. But this is the second year. We didn't have uh, any PA system the first year we played acoustically. But we had the saxophone player from Glenn Campbell's band who was Polish, Las Casi Kane. Uh, I think it's the guy in the clarinet right there. He played with Glenn Campbell. And then there were several others, and we did this for a couple of years. I still play there to this day, so does Brian Marshall. And just to show you, uh, uh, you know, my hair was a different color back then. I was actually very blonde as a little kid, if you'll remember in one of them earlier pictures. This is me today and my son and Brian playing for a family reunion here in Anderson. I just wanted to put this picture in there because I'm going to play you some songs right after this that the three of us played acoustically for Adam Mickiewicz University, the linguistic people, when we did the taping. They took 15 songs, original songs that came from the 19th century, and now they're on archive in the university in Poznan. And uh, this was, I'm not sure what when this was, I think this was probably about six, seven years ago. Okay, uh, Angelica, we're going to try this, and I'll, I hope it works this time, but I'm going to play you some music of those three people in the previous slide playing the original songs. The first one I'm going to play for you was my grandfather's favorite song to play on the accordion, and um, so now <clears throat> I am going to see if I can make this work, okay? Let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear right. and see this. Right. Yeah, yep. we can see him. Yep. No PA system. Just the acoustic. In the Chapel Hill Museum. You'll see uh, the dance for shoes go. Website. And you 
can just see those old timers stomping their feet on those wooden bands for them. You can just hear it. Texas country and that, you just got from Texas. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop there. See if I can make this work. Okay, Angelica, are we good? Back to the beginning. Okay, I am. Yes. Going, okay, now I'm going to play you a song that goes back 800 years to the village of my family. And the reason I know it goes back 800 years is because when those kids came over, I brought to the Polish Heritage Center, were so intrigued by this song, not by me playing it, but by Daniel playing it. They went back and looked it up. Oscar Kohlberg documented these songs in 1850 and put it all together during during the partitioning time. And, and it says in there, and they sent this back to me. Now I'm going to play it. And what it says is, Oitza muy velki, skoko do belki. It's how great is my father. And it's a tribute. And it's and I play it more as a ballad. And at the end, I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but Brian will jack it up and go a little faster than I play it. But I'm gonna play it as I think it was actually intended. I'm a transgender woman, and my dream was always to be loved and be accepted. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you, and visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. And this will be I don't want to just keep playing playing that. I'm going to play you a now. I'm going to play you an obedek that's been we've been playing since my family got here. Shamatui from Shamatui north of Poznania uh, has a one and a half hour theatrical old wedding from Vilka Polska act that they do, and five of the songs in that wedding theater theatrics. This is one of those songs, and there and I play five of the ones that they play. But I still have the lyrics, and they've lost some of them. So anyway, I'm friends with them. I've been there several times, and then they have some lyrics I don't have. 
I'm going to play you this, the three day wedding. And uh, this is, this is no wedding. My sister, you look, 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 I'm going to, I did move, I think I'm going to move on unless, I, I'm going to play you one last one. I've got to play. It's our signature song. It's the one that made its way back to Poland as well as how great my father is. And uh, this Shivy Korn, and most of you that are online here know my son's uh, uh, name on to Facebook is Shivy Korn means gray horse. Shivy Korn? Yeah, Shivy Korn. And this is the polka. It's not Czech, it's Polish. And I will explain that in a minute. The dance steps are Czech. The two, four times the rhythm is Slavic. And we have this, and maybe even before they, but they get credit to the dance. because I've got some things I want to show you and I'm going to move on. There's some others here. There's one called Red Beer and there's going to be a story in a minute. I probably, uh, I don't know if I'll have time to tell the whole story, but I was told there was no such thing as Red Beer by some of my good Ale friends. I went to Poland a few years ago, sat down in a park in uh, Kalish, which is in southern Wielkopolska on the Silesian northern border. And they brought me a Red Beer. And I said, hell, I thought there wasn't no such thing as a red beer. And they said, yeah, but if you put raspberry or, you know, uh, a strawberry, you know, juice in there, it turns it red and it cuts the bitterness down at the hops because some women and some people don't like that hopsy taste and it makes it a little more pleasant for people. And I said, I cannot wait to get back to talk to my Grale friends and let them know that I've been singing it correctly, you know, from our region all those years and uh, and so forth. So anyway... I would be careful with with the new Polonia correcting old Polonia because there's some things that have been held true that's frozen in time that we you know that we uh, you know might might still be okay. 
Okay, I'm just going to quickly go through these because I know we're running out of time. I need to get out of the dark here. Well, I can do it in the dark if y'all are okay with it. The national dances of Poland are the Krakowiak from Krakow, Kujawiak from Kujawi, the Mazurek uh, that we talked about, <clears throat> the Oberek, and the Polonaise. And, uh, and the Mazurek, I'm going to play you some from Nortino. I'm going to play you a, some Obereks from Nortino. I'm going to play you some... Uh, uh, type polka type, what we call the the Krakowiak is a polka. It's in two four time, okay. And the Polonaise, and why is the Grand March so important? I'm going to go through that. I know Alan has heard this story, but I'm going to quickly go through that. But I'm going to be able to play some of them today. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, when uh, Pitawa Shipani was recorded in 1930 and 1937 in Chicago. Uh, Pitawa Shipani is known in Texas and throughout country music as. Uh, uh, Westphalia Waltz. It's actually Polish. I've uh, got the documentation. Hollywood did, did a documentary on it, <clears throat> and I'll tell you the story on it in just a minute. This man here on the left is the one that brought it from Chicago. Steve Okonski, born in Bremont, knew the man. He also played at Polish Days when I played there. This is him on the right with some band members here. He's on the far right. He's uh, he's left. He's not with us anymore, but his impact and his music still is. He's the one that gets credit for bringing that song down to Chicago so Cotton Collins could make it famous and then Hank Thompson. This is uh, Cotton Collins here on the left. Uh, <clears throat> Steve would play in Central Texas. You got to understand where Bremont is. It's right on the edge and surrounded by lots of Czech communities. And uh, you've got Waco Temple. You've got uh, Cameron. You've got all those counties there. That's the northern point. Right above there, you've got Ennis. And so they all went to each other's dances and heard this thing, heard this song. Cotton Collins took it, refined it, made it a classic. And then it was picked up by uh, Nashville. And, <clears throat> and as, as we go forward, uh, it was recorded in 1947 by Floyd Tillman. But Hank Thompson is the one that made it famous on the world stage as you know it today. But it all goes back to Steve Okonski, uh, a self-taught, self-made fiddler, Polish guy from Bremont, Texas, that today, as you know, it is Westphalia, but I'll let everybody know it's Pitawa Shapani. I can sing it. I know the lyrics. I know the words, et cetera. And I, I love doing it and telling that story. I was in Lubbock here a while back and a country band up there played Westphalia Waltz. And I got up and sang it in Polish in Lubbock, Texas at Texas Tech. Just think about that a minute. All right. I just want to go real quickly through these real quick. Uh, Pee Wee King was actually Polish. His last name was Kuzinski, but he he's the one that brought the studded uh, suits that you see, the uh, uh, the nudie suits that some of the guys, you know, the famous uh, cowboy look, you know, the the rhinestone look and the cowboy, uh, 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 how do you say, uh, jacket and pants and that type of stuff. He's noted for that, but he's the one that brought the steel guitar into country music. He's from up north. Uh, and uh, John, I see you looking at that, and that's exactly right. He's from, uh, I think, up in, uh, uh, he died in Kentucky, but I, I'm not sure he wasn't from Ohio or somewhere up in there. But anyway, he is the one for bringing uh, the steel guitar, that type of dress with the rhinestones and things like that to country music. His dad had a polka band. He wanted to get in what was modern music, and that was country music at that time in the 1940s. Today, everybody wants to do rock and roll and left country or whatever, but that was the deal at the time I read up about him. This is the most famous country band in Texas today, and uh, this is the Cody Johnson band, and I want to read to you this, and don't forgive me, but I think it's that important. The, the young boys are on the right over there, but his, this is at the 58th uh, 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 Music Country Awards. Most of you know these people. My son wrote this, and uh, in fact, three of the members have Polish roots uh, in this band. And uh, Miles Stone, whose grandparents are Lucy and Vincent Pollock from Pana Maria. Miles' mom also attended grade school in Pana Maria. Bass player Joey Pruski, who's from Kuszczusko. And I bet it was his great-grandpa that heard me uh, spe heard them speak in Polish, and you heard me tell that story in Pruski's store. Uh, I caught them talking about me when I went walked in that store many years ago. And then you've got uh, an old, uh, that, that my son talks about that story. And then the fiddle player is Jody Dale Bartula. I showed you his grandpa, Joe Bartula Jr., in earlier slides. That's his grandfather. And then his great-grandfather played as well. And this young man plays the fiddle in this band today, representing Bremont, Texas. 
and the folks from here. So we've got Panamaria Maria and Brazos Valley represented in this real smart, real popular country band in Texas, and we're very, very proud of them. Uh, the Grand March, I'm just going to quickly go to this because I want to play you a few more melodies so you'll understand the impact that Polish people have made on Nortino and country music in this part of the world. The original name of the Grand March was the Chodzenia, the walking dance. What it was was walking from the bride's house to the church with music in the front, the young couple and the immediate family going to the church with music. And then coming back, they would invite everybody to the reception, the Vesele. And it was a bad luck not to invite everybody, even your enemies or people you didn't like. Everybody was invited in the village. And so they didn't have invitations, but as you know, in the old days, three Sundays before, they would they would announce the wedding. If there were any objections or and that you knew a wedding was coming up that you would be invited to. This particular Hodzinia made it into the Czech Republic or to the Moravia and to Bohemia and down into Hungary. It's very popular day in Texas and Western Kansas. Why Western Kansas? Because it's a very big Czech area. They brought it to the Americas from, to, from uh, Moravia, which came through uh, southern Poland. And the Grand March is the first dance that should be danced to kick off the reception uh, of the reception party. The Polonaise, that is actually the refinement of the Hodzenia, and it was uh, very, very popular in French. They are the ones that gave it the name Polonaise is actually French for a Polish woman. And it's a very elegant, uh, very graceful dance but it gets its name from that going back to the peasantry. Chopin's, a lot of his music goes back to the peasantry and he took it, refined it and made it to the elegant music that you know of Chopin today. Actually, the first wedding march was Queen Victoria, but you got to understand the royal family is actually German and they came from Prussia and that made its way into Prussia, into Germany, just as the accordion made its way the other way into Prussia towards Poland. So things were changing back and forth, just like we teach each other, share ideas and things back in the day. Okay, this is about the Polonaise and all of that and, uh, and the graceful dance. Emperor Maximilian came to, uh, to Me Mexico City to be emperor in 1864. He was assassinated in 63. So in three years, he accumulated marching bands and musicians from Austria, from the Czech Republic, from southern Poland, probably Silesia, probably from Galatia. He brought them in because that area was under uh, Austrian rule. And he brought that music. And it is documented in the historical museum in Monterrey today, the biggest, newest museum in all of Mexico, that all three, Polish, German, and Czech, are given credit for Nortino Conjunta music. I'm going to give you some of our contribution in this next slide. By the way, Redova... It means Polish dance less active and lively than the Mazurka, which is meaning I'll play you the Redovas in a minute. Okay, now I'm going to play you some country music. Now keep in mind, I'm talking about the rhythm. The rhythms were adopted by country and we made it our own, just like Nortino took and made new music. But the rhythms are the same. And the rhythm of an obetic, I'm going, you're going to hear it in Yellow Bandana, by Fair and Young, if this thing will work. I hope it will, Angelica. <laughs> you can be a business owner and be an entrepreneur and just make it happen. IHOP and Wonka I'm are sorry, dreaming up a magical me. new menu. Magnificently mouth-watering item. To uh, go back now and play a few more, because I, I know I want, I, I'm going to play you another Redova from 1930. Okay, and the picture is from the 1800s. And this is Nortino. Can you hear it, Angelica? The picture's from 1886. Watch this picture. Yes. There's a German honer party. than we play. Not, it's a different melody, but the same thing. Isn't it beautiful? Very simple. We're like us when we play. But you can hear it. 
hear me? One, two, three, one with the heavy one beat. I found this one night when I was shopping online. So let me play now for you. If I don't get too big a hurry here. I'm going to play you another one by Marty Robbins this time. So I would dance this the same I way I was a deep for this Mexican babe. I was in love, but in vain I could tell. We ought to do a dance lesson sometime out at the Heritage One Center and play some. And do country and do Polish and it shows the same thing. Hey, I'm going to stop there, but I'm going to show you something else now. Okay, this is uh, a... <clears throat> This is a HEB brand products were born and raised to be Polish. Texas favorites. HEB, mi tienda tamales, to Texas with love. Start your day with Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. If there's one more here, and then we're going to close this out. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, uh, oh, I've got to play this one for you because this is Nortino, it's ours. This was the song in the 1850s that was so popular that Maximian brought over uh, to Mexico. And this is in Mexico, and it's going to be it's sung in Spanish. And, uh, bueno, mientras el pueblo acaba ya partiéndose el alma para sacar adelante su cabo mazurca, y vamos a hacer esta que sea. Y en el Valle de Texas, les cuento a ustedes que las muchachas antiguamente. Cuando iban a un, llevaban una bolsita con un pequeño, una pequeña libreta para bailar cada pieza, porque era de más en todo en la alta sociedad. Vámonos. This is pure folk. In 1850, all the royal houses of Europe were in So, you saw it, 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 you saw Okay. Let me, uh, let's see here. Well, I'll play you one last polka that you're not going to uh, think is a polka. And uh, all of his songs are polkas. Everything I do that's for my health is an accomplishment. Concerns of getting screened faded away. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to stop there. I've got the auctioneer song. I got a bunch of other ones here, but I think we probably need to move on. I just wanted to show this picture it was 2014. I organized the first Polish days in the Texas Capitol in 2014. We had over 300 people from all over Polonia showed up. And that was actually even before I got involved with the PACT. I know the bishop was watching and listening to this, and then he started his recruitment. <laughs> But anyway, we had everybody in the state capitol on all levels, all circles, all the way up and filling the area out. We took a big picture outside. The Polish Council, uh, PACT, I've got several board members on here with me. I see Margaret's on here, John Zentek's on here. There may be some others I'm missing, but to further the knowledge of Polish culture, traditions, history, language, arts, and current affairs and statewide events in Texas and to facilitate networking. The Polish Heritage Center, who's sponsoring me tonight, and I'm, I'm proud to be on that board of directors, the mission statement. 
of the Polish heritage is to retain po for posterity and to keep vibrant and relevant the history, values, beliefs, customs, and traditions of the Polish settlers and their descendants at this first and oldest permanent Polish settlement in America to inspire, engage, and educate our visitors. And then it talks about <clears throat> more here. And then a quote from our bishop, the sacred memories of generations. Let's memorialize our ancestors. We have to preserve our our inherent values, share them with new generations of our family, and with pride and thanksgiving, share them with the whole world. This is a Jim Mazurkiewicz here. If Polonia is to survive, we've got to work together. Number two, there's no future Polonia without new immigrants. They keep us alive and strong. We must involve our youth. Without it, the youth, there is no us or no future. And there's no future Polonia without recognizing all of Texas Polonia. We are one Polish community and we must work together. This is the picture from this month's Texas Monthly, if you hadn't seen it. Uh, this is at Chestahova at their 150th parish celebration. This bench says Macha Gimba donated by the Macha Gimba family. Can you see that on there? It's very appropriate. I'm sitting outside that church. They took an hour or so of pictures and that's the one they chose. Once again, I'm going to say this, and in closing, our Polish music is a thread that binds the Polish-American community together today, as we have almost lost our ability to speak from our 19th century, uh, and uh, uh, you know those of us from the 19th century. But all of this is uh, music is tied to our tradition and customs. The Polish dialects of Silesia and Wielkopolska that we cherish so much in South Texas and the Brazos Valley, and the new dialects that have come in from Gorale and other regions of Poland. Every holiday and celebration in our culture has music associated with, it, associated with it. Music creates the atmosphere of any event, and music brings back memories of your past while creating new memories in the present, helping to preserve our language and our culture. If a picture is worth a thousand words, music is worth a thousand memories. Now you know why I play Polish music. Thank you very much, and I apologize if I took a little longer than normal. Uh, I think if there's not, um, if there's some questions, I will take them from there. Uh, I can stop this if you like, and where I can see everybody. And uh, okay, and if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And the floor is yours, Al or Angelica, whomever. Thank you, Actually, Jim. I, I think I speak for all of us on how wonderful it was. I think I'd like to hear from Alice Poor, the Polish yes. Heritage Center's new executive director. Alice? I'm here, and Dr. Jim, that was absolutely fantastic. I know that everybody in the audience, I'm sure, was not aware of the direct connection that the music that we've grown up listening to and love is directly uh, related to Polish heritage. I think that's fabulous and I enjoyed the evening. I apologize for not being on camera, but if there are questions, uh, we'd like to address those at this time. And Alice, my apologies to you, but I couldn't see who was on and who wasn't. And I could see the first three people on my screen were me, Angelica, and Al, and that's all I could see. <laughs> okay, well, I'm having problems too, but that's okay. Are there that's any okay. questions from the audience? No. Well, you know, maybe it was a good thing we weren't on camera tonight because I bet everybody was up and dancing around in their living rooms with that music. It was fabulous. Thank you so, so much. Hi, um, th this is Bojana from, from the Washington, D.C. area. If there is time, I would like to uh, make a comment and ask a question, if possible. Certainly. Hi, so um, this is Bojana. So, Jim, I really enjoyed your presentation. It was beautiful, and I hope to hear more of it. Oh. And I also wanted to to also uh, point out that today is is also a very solemn um, observance. Um, a forty two years ago, martial law was imposed in Poland, and I'm wondering if you know there, um, if you have uh, anything about that that uh, would be um, in tune with with that, or if you have any other um th anything else. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Bojana, I don't have that yet. <laughs> I just put this together yesterday, this morning. <laughs> and uh, I, I, since the day I've had 
four requests to help with some other things too. And I'm working with about 40 different Polish people since uh, November. And uh, I if maybe in the future, I will do something like that. I'd be happy to. Uh, the reason I've chose to do some of these from the 19th century to today, none of this was documented. None of it was uh, for historical purposes. And we're trying to catch up, uh, in my opinion, with some of the language, with some of the music and some of those kind of things that uh, that I think are so important to Texas Polish history. But what that isn't important today, today, today it is a very sad day. And uh, and my condolences, but you know what? Also, my deep respect for the Polish people for being so strong to having one of the greatest democracies, one of the greatest success stories in mankind that transitioned from communism after the fall of the wall to a democracy. I will tell you this, Bozena, I am working with the Institute Pamenci Narodowy, the Institution of National Remembrance in Warsaw. We will have a national day of celebration of the right to vote in free elections on June 5th. I'm a big part of that. It was actually my idea that was birthed in my house last year this time uh, for an author writing a book on Piersi Bush, the first Bush, about that transition. He gets credit for that transition, Reagan for the fall of the wall, of course, with uh, with uh, Pope St. John Paul II. And uh, But anyway, we're going to have this and we're going to kick it off in the former communist headquarters. That was my idea as well. My mother's scared to death because of some of the things I'm doing. And she says that, anyway, we'll talk about that another time. But anyway, yeah, I think it's appropriate to start there. And then we want to end up with a big celebration at the U.S. ambassador's uh, residence that night, as it was done 35 years ago, to celebrate this success story called Poland's democracy and that GDP growth of 5% since 1989 till today, fastest growing economy in the, in the world. And my hat is off to Poland and that success. And the transition of power, uh, being able to transition in this new government without violence and bloodshed, that is a true democracy, and I respect them deeply, and my hat is off to them, because I'm watching that very closely, because I have friends in both both sides. Yes, that, thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. And I think a lot of that, that transition, the peaceful transition was due to John Paul II and his visit to Poland, yes, particularly when he first became Pope. Yes, exactly. And of course, they didn't grant him the first visit. So he came later a little bit longer and the crowds were bigger. And he, you know, he, all he would say was, yeah, boy, yeah, don't be afraid. And that was code for, you know what, we're more than them and we're stronger than them. If we work together as one Poland, we can defeat this. And they did. And God bless Poland. Amen. Amen. Any questions about the music or or some of my background, I'm still discovering things just like they are at the pyramids or in the Maya pyramids. If you like the History Channel as much as I do, I'm still discovering new things all the time and adding them to my presentations and to my treasure chest of uh, historical documentation. And if you find something, please share it with me and I will add it to uh, future lectures and future opportunity. Uh, I just want to say this, Alice uh, and Al and the board, uh, the PHC, thank you. It was an honor to do this. It's a pleasure uh, to share this information. Help me share our story with our ethnic group and our cousins around the world. We have a beautiful story to tell. Amen. You definitely do. And I want to remind everyone this evening that this presentation is definitely worth a second look and it will be available on the website of the Polish Heritage Center. Give us a couple of days and we'll get it up. Okay. And Angelica, thank you. This is actually her idea. I told her to pick the subject because I had oh. five, you know, it's what, two hour lectures. And I said, well, just pick one because there I could talk an hour on all of them, all 20 subjects. <laughs> so thank you for inviting me. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you and God bless We did. You. Thank you so much. I'd like to end the evening with a prayer, uh, if you'll bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share with Dr. Jim his life and his wonderful stories of his Polish heritage. Continue to bless this journey as we all learn more of our Polish culture and traditions. In your name we pray, amen. 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 amen.
Well, good night, everybody. And thank you so much for tuning in. And Helica, thank you again for this idea. Dr. Jim, it was fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alice. Merry Christmas to all. Nawzajem. Cześć Boże. Pięć Boże. Dobranoc. Dobranoc.